I think it's probably time to begin. Thank you all for uh, coming today. Um, so before I do a, a very brief sort of welcoming set of remarks, uh, just a couple of uh, business pieces. I think first I want to just thank now and really thank every day uh, the intrepid staff of our center for 21st century studies uh, for the amazing work they've done in organizing the conference for this year. None of this conference could have happened at all without Cami Thomas, Molly McCourt, Kyle Miner, and Lauren McHarg. Those of you who've been in contact with them know. So how about start with a round of applause for the conference committee. And also, um, among the events then that they've helped put together is a reception after today's plenary lectures. So I really encourage you very strongly to come because there is a lot of good food and it needs to be eaten. And the reception is at Sala de Pranzo, right across the street. It's a, about a block walk and it looks like the rain's gonna hold off until later this evening. So um, please make sure to join us then. For those of you who um, are staying downtown and want to ride the shuttle, uh, which goes back to the Marriott, that will leave from Sala at 7.45. So um, give us about an hour and a half or so for the reception. Okay, so I think uh, that's the business, the main business part. I do also want to thank, though, uh, my co-organizer, Jocelyn Chapaniak-Galise, and uh, she'll provide a more formal and undoubtedly more insightful introduction to the conference uh, tomorrow morning. Um, but uh, she's been uh, instrumental in making this happen as well. Uh, yes. yes. Uh, Okay, so this conference then marks uh, the unofficial beginning of the celebration of the 50th anniversary of the Center for 20th, now 21st Century Studies, which was founded in the fall semester of 1968. It's really one of the first humanities centers in, in the U.S. and therefore really in the world since the humanities center is as a kind of institutional formation is largely a U.S. Uh, creation. In anticipation of our more formal anniversary celebration in the fall, we wanted to focus this conference on cinema because of the crucial role that cinema played in the center's first decades and the even more crucial role that the center played in the 1970s and 1980s in establishing film studies as an academic discipline in the U.S. and abroad. Almost every year from 1975 to 1985, the Center for 20th Century Studies hosted a major international film conference. These conferences served to put the center on the map as among the leading sites for film studies in the US, as well as to help institutionalize film studies as an academic discipline. The list of presenters at those conferences which included one of today's plenary speakers, Marianne Doan, uh, reads like a who's who of major film and media scholars and critical theorists. To give you a sense of the intellectual traffic coming through the center in that decade, here is a, a, an extremely non-exhaustive but highlight list of some participants from that period uh, arranged alphabetically. Uh, Dudley Andrew, Raymond Ballour, Herb Blau, David Bordwell, Noel Carroll, Jean-Louis Camoli, Manuel Delanda, Teresa De Laretis, Thomas Elsaser, Shoshana Fellman, Jane Foyer, Sandy Flitterman, Jane Gaines, Douglas Gomery, Miriam Hansen, Stephen Heath, Jay Hoberman, Frederick Jameson, Marcia Kinder, Annette Kuhn, Jean-Francois Lyotard, Gerald Mast, Judith Main, Patricia Mellencamp, Christiane Metz, Annette Mickelson, Laura Mulvey, Bill Nichols, Ruby Rich, David Rodwick, Kasha Silverman, Kristen Thompson, Linda Williams, Peter Wolin. It's a pretty remarkable roster, I think, of, 
of scholars, and I think it gives you a good sense of what the, the energy at, of the center at that time in film studies. We also, though, chose this end of cinema as our conference focus this year because it fits nicely as well with this year's research theme at C21 and uh, the theme that our fellows have been working on this year is projects uh, related to the eschaton. The theme is in the eschaton. So as our conference description asserts, cinema has in some sense always seen itself or been understood as on the verge of some kind of end as in the eschaton, each of which ends claims to truly to be final. Are we now then, as scholars have proclaimed, in an age of post-cinema? Has the massive global wave of digital production, distribution, and exhibition finally eradicated cinema as we've known it? Martin Scorsese, for one, seems to think so, declaring in an interview with the Associated Press in the last days of 2016 that cinema is gone. The cinema that I grew up with and that I'm making, it's gone. Scorsese's mournful tone echoed filmmakers like Ridley Scott and Peter Greenaway, as well as articles in popular publications like GQ, The New Yorker, and Vanity Fair, which blame prestige television, high ticket prices, and mostly streaming platforms and digital technologies for cinema's long-heralded demise. Similar elegies for cinema of saturated academic discourse over the first two decades of the 21st century, from Paolo Cerciu Sai to Alexander Zalton. Whatever the object cinema was, it seems to have been summarily executed in the digital era. Yet as John Belton has recently noted, predictions of the death of cinema have been with us as long as the cinema itself, while declarations of cinema's ends are in part a function of its beginnings. But whose cinema is ending? If cinema implies a universal canon built on default ideologies, has its death been a response in part to deeper investigations into diversities made possible by increased access to the means of production? Might Oscars so white signify an end of white male and Western-centric cinema? Are cinema's many deaths then bound to another kind of end, what we understand to be the goal of cinema, whether political, aesthetic, representational, theoretical, or technological. This conference on the end of cinema aims to explore these many deaths. These are just some of the questions we expect to pursue over the next three days. Is the current post-cinematic moment one where cinema has died and been reborn? How have globalized and localized diversities resisted or transformed cinema's deaths? Has the rhetoric of the end of cinema closed off or reopened? disciplinary boundaries? How have queer and trans theories inflected cinema's dying breaths and or its reincarnation? If the mystery of its death can only be investigated in the light of the mystery of its life, what new models might arise in looking both backwards and forwards to the ends of cinema? I look forward then to the papers and conversations over the next few days where I expect to learn answers to some of these questions and most likely to leave the conference with even more questions than those which we started. So thanks very much, and uh, on with the show. Um, so I want to welcome my colleague, Tammy Williams, who will do a brief introduction of our first speaker, Andre Gordier. Tammy? It is my honor and pleasure to introduce André Gaudreau, Professor of Art History and Cinema Studies at the University of Montreal. I am proud to call André my colleague and friend. In 1986, André was one of five co-founders and the first elected president of Domator, the International Society for the Study of Early Cinema. As Domator's current president, and since we are here to talk about the ends of cinema, I couldn't resist joking with Andre that he is the alpha and I am the omega, <laughs> though hopefully not the last president. With characteristic grace and humor, 
Andre quipped, the alpha, okay, but not necessarily the alpha male. Today's first keynote speaker, Andre Godreau, is one of the foremost international pioneers of early cinema studies and a leader in the field. His 1988 book, Du littéraire au filmique, système du récit, from the literary to the filmic, the story system, with a preface by French philosopher Paul Ricoeur, cemented his reputation early on. Professor Godreau has penned close to 20 seminal books on the history and theory of the moving image and has authored over 120 articles or book chapters, as well as organized multiple international conferences. Some of his best known works include Le Récit Cinématographique with François Jost in 1991, The Cinematographic Story, uh, Pathé 1900, or Pathé 1900, uh, I'll just read the English, Fragments of an Analytical Filmography of Early Cinema. His most recent publications include Companion to Early Cinema, The Blackwell Companion, from 2012, The Kinematic Turn, Film in the Digital Era and Its Ten Problems, from 2012, Film and Attraction, From Kinematography to Cinema, in 2011, the edited volume, American Cinema, 1890 to 1909, Themes and Variations, from 2009, From Plato to Lumiere, Narration and Monstration in Literature and Cinema, also from 2009, and last but not least, and I am only naming some of these great works, um, La Fin du Cinéma, The End of Cinema, A Media in Crisis in the Digital Era in 2013. Uh, he has also founded multiple organizations. Having taught for over 40 years, first at the Université de Laval and then University of Montreal. He is the director of Graphique, a research group on the emergence and development of cinematic and theatrical institutions, which he founded in 1994. He was also the founder of the CRI, Centre de Recherche sur l'Intermédialité, Research Center on Intermediality, which he headed from 1997 to 2005. Since 1999, he is the director of the bilingual scholarly film journal Cinemas, published in Montreal. And more recently, in 2010, he co-founded, he's the co-founder and director of the Observatoire uh, du Cinéma au Québec, uh, the Quebec Cinematic Observatory at the University of Montreal, and of the International Research Partnership Technes. These are just a few of Andre's accomplishments. He is also, uh, not surprisingly, the recipient of a long list of awards. Andre had the privilege of being the first Canadian film scholar, or the honor of being the first Canadian film scholar to be awarded the prestigious Killam Grant for Research from the Canadian Council in 1996. The, he also received the, uh, the AQEC, AQU, AQEC Olivieri Award for the Best Canadian Film Book, published in 93. That was for Pathé 1900. Pathé 1900. The Jean Mitri Award from the Giornate del Cinema Muto in Pordenone, Pordenone Silent Film Festival, an international award for distinguished contributions to the reappraisal and appreciation of the field of silent cinema. A Guggenheim Fellow in 2013, Professor Godreau recently received the 2017 Prix Léon Guérin, the highest distinction awarded by the Quebec government to a researcher for lifetime achievement in the field of the humanities or social sciences. This award recognized his innovative work on the concept of the cinema of attractions that is so important to our field. 
and his works illuminating connections between past and present, as well as its exceptional contribution to the emergence of cinema studies, or his, his exceptional contribution to the emergence of cinema studies. I've been sworn to secrecy, but I think I am allowed to say that in less than a week, he will receive an even more prestigious Pan-Canadian Award for his groundbreaking research in cinema studies. So it is my honor, and I ask you to please join me in welcoming uh, the inimitable, incomparable Andre Godreau. So while we are preparing, I just want to express my thanks to uh, Richard for inviting me, and uh, also uh, my friend uh, and colleague uh, who presented me so nicely that I have a burden and maybe I won't be at the height. Uh, thank you. Um, I have some other things to prepare. I'll be with you in a second. Maybe we should lower the, a little bit the, um, the light now. <coughs> Let's hope it works the first time. It does not. Yes, it does. OK. Can we lower the light a little bit? Is it for you? It's okay for me. I don't have paper. <laughs> because in fact, I didn't, uh, the, the bad news and the good news. I did not write my paper uh, because, well, I didn't have time, but also it's because uh, <laughs> in, <laughs> in English, it's very it's more complicated for me. In French, I would have had time, but you know, translating. So in fact, that's what I do these days. I prefer to be, uh, you know, uh, uh, f try to be fluent in English, which is not that easy. Maybe I'll be better at the end, but now I'll try to do my best. And I have a lot of the diapositive of, uh, of uh, uh, slides with a lot of uh, writings, you will see. So it helps me to uh, make you understand what I want to express. So first thing I want to express is that title. The title of the, that conference, I hesitated between many titles, but I think uh, that's the one I prefer. The resilience of, I don't remember if it's the one that is uh, in the program, but anyway, the resilience of quote cinema, unquote. So I think the quote unquote is something important in that, uh, 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 that it uh, re uh, relativizes the meaning of the world, or it, at least it points on it, that, uh, uh, some questioning. So, there is, or, or, and also I think we could say that uh, the subtitle could be the resilience of a media called cinema and uh, the resilience of the word cinema, both of them. So, there are three kind of uh, uh, layers of interrogation here and, and there's a fourth one also. So, but let's start by an enigma. Which cineast said the following, according to you? I won't ask you to, <laughs> to answer, but <laughs> I don't like cinema. You don't know, maybe, but I want you to know that someone, not uh, uh, the, the least, said to him that he was right. Yeah. I know what you mean, Orson Welles. <laughs> so I have to stop here because there is a small problem here with the presentation. I'm sorry. So it doesn't count. I think uh, we tested it and it worked. No, it does not. <laughs> I think 
think I will need uh, Kyle or someone from the technician. Is Kyle there? We have a problem here. <coughs> Sorry about that, but it doesn't work like it did. So are they coming? Please. Look, you succeeded. Yeah. The decimal is it, okay? So I got my thing and the note, but what do I do now? I need to know. No. So I go there. Uh, if I don't have that, I cannot do it. Oh. So how, how do we... Then we have to go there. Should I? Uh, 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 no. Personally, I, I don't know why. why. Okay, so I'll, I'll resume, but I don't have access to uh, my notes, which is a pity. 
So I'll try to do what I can, but uh, it, it worked just before, but now it doesn't work and I don't know how. The technician ha knew how to do it before, but I don't know. Okay, so today I'll have a foot, a foot in the past and a foot in the future. The past and future of cinema, but also the past and future of my work about on a digital, a digital turn, uh, which has been carried out since about 2005, let's say. Part of it with uh, Philippe Mar Marion, and which gave rise to the publication of this book uh, that uh, uh, we talked about just before. So the past is also the fact that I will come back a little bit and uh, 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 take advantage of this platform to look back and take stock, avoiding mere repetition but not redundancy, and to take advantage also of uh, the opportunity to look a little into the future. Um, I will not go as far as I went in Boston in 2012 when I sent us right into the year 2052 when I will be 100 years old, yeah. at a time when the SCMS might be called uh, differently uh, society for the, not society, uh, society for the movie image studies. But as you can see here, th there is an explanation of the change of the, uh, of the name. Uh, cinema, society for Cinema and Media Studies was the new name that has been cho chosen in 2002 for the Society for Cinema Studies. And uh, I, 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 I predicted that uh, the Society for Cinema uh, would change its name later for Society for the Moving Image Studies. Uh, and uh, uh, I, could, I predicted also, uh, in a, on a humorous fashion, that it could be called, uh, uh, sorry, there's a small problem here. Yeah. Coming. <laughs> Society for the Post Cinematic Media Studies. I also predicted that there would be change also at the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. And uh, uh, I, I said also that there will be no longer, uh, at some point, no longer singular media uh, and with a touch, touch of humor, uh, but rather a sole integrative imper, hyper medium, uh, hyper medium, a total hyper medium. Uh, we might say, which I have represented this way in 2012. <laughs> <laughs> and whose arrival I had predicted for the year 2025. Watch it, it's coming. <laughs> I hope that my predictions for the future would, that be, a, would be as precise as those of René Barjavel, the author of the book Cinema Total, which dates from 1944. And this film, entitled The Television uh, uh, de Demain, The Eyes of Tomorrow, produced in 1947, which is partially based on the book by Bargevel, and of which I will now show you a clip. Puis, on fera des postes récepteurs de télévision bijoux, comme il y a des postes de TSF bijoux. Des postes de poche, grands comme une lampe électrique. Plus besoin d'acheter un journal, on se branchera sur l'émission d'information, ou sur l'éditorial politique, ou sur la chronique de mode, ou sur le compte rendu sportif. Ok, so I'll show, show it once more with the sound now. Puis, on fera des postes récepteurs de télévision bijoux, comme il y a des postes de TSF bijoux. Des postes de poche, grands comme une lampe électrique. Plus besoin d'acheter un journal, on se branchera sur l'émission d'information, ou sur l'éditorial politique, ou sur la chronique de mode, 1947, eh? ou sur le compte rendu sportif, <rire> voire même sur un problème de mots croisés. Et la rue <rire> présentera un singulier spectacle. Dans le métro, on lira le poste du voisin par-dessus son épaule. Et il y aura des faits divers tellement passionnants que... <rire> Et je ne parle pas du fait. Il était devant elle, elle était devant lui. 
ils étaient l'un devant l'autre, heureux de se sentir émus, émus de se sentir heureux. So, I think this reminds you of some other matters <laughs> that we see uh, today. And that film is very, very interesting that uh, also we can say that here, the, what they, uh, the, they describe the film as being the, uh, this, the film pictures, the uses and applications of television in different fields in the future. I want you to no take notice of that word here, applications. Applications of television. We'll come back on this later. At any rate, I think we can uh, uh, all agree that uh, the planet uh, uh, cinema is uh, spinning around, uh, spinning around, and that there is a chase, uh, a real uh, challenge to us for the last uh, uh, maybe 15 years. Uh, w but when I say this phrase about a planet called cinema, one thing is certain: the dozens of brains present in this room this afternoon do not picture the same realm with this single term, that is, cinema. There is even a large difference between the French and the English brain. We already know that, but, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> what about the Quebecer? <laughs> there is a, uh, even a large difference between the French and the <laughs> English brain in general, I would say, but particularly in this case. Since there is an immense uh, connotative difference between the French word cinéma and the borough word cinema. I turn now to uh, a, a, a quotation from my friend Francesco Cassetti, who is uh, introducing uh, the uh, question uh, of the death of cinema, but in a really, I would say, poetic manner and by the side manner. He writes, it signals the, the possible disappearance of its object. Cinema is no longer what it has been. Its changes are so radical, this is in 19, oh, uh, 2007, so radical that they are equivalent to a death. So this prob the problematic of the death of cinema, I think it's very interesting, and it's, I think it's interesting also that you talk about the ends of cinema, uh, in the same way as in our book with Philippe Marion, we talk about the fin du cinema. When, when you quote this book, please always say question mark at the end, because it is no question mark. So, so la fin du cinema, point d'interrogation, the end of cinema, question mark. So, uh, we all, I think there's not that much differences in between all those who think about the death of cinema. I think that finally we agree that this is a question of positioning, a question of, 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 uh, of uh, post observation, observation point. Because no one will say that there's nothing in cinema who doesn't die. But no one will say, I guess, that really, that cinema is really dying. Uh, if it dies, it re it re uh, it reverts. Uh, it is it re it is reborn every time. So we'll, we in the discussion we might come back on that. But one of uh, 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 of the commentator who specialized himself in the death of cinema in the comments on the death of cinema. Uh, I had a long segment about. Uh, I could have made one full uh, conference on him about this is Peter Greenaway, as uh, uh, Richard uh, quoted uh, just before. Uh, I want to single out one of them that you, maybe you know, I guess you know, I already quoted it someplace, but I think it's interesting to see that, you know, uh, Greenaway plays with this because, you know, he's ki kind of saying that the death of cinema appeared at one point on the day that some Christmas, or uh, I don't know, uh, 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 Santa Claus uh, uh, distributed the same day in all the, the, the home of, of the world the famous uh, remote control zapper. Uh, so uh, the problem also is that he gave us clues to understand that uh, maybe this was not exactly what he had really in his English brain. Uh, because when you look at the, the, at the, the, at the calendar, <laughs> you see that there is a real problem with that day, and that you know 
that I don't think he was really serious, but maybe he was serious about the fact that the remote control kind of killed something of cinema. And I think he's right. I won't explain this except in the discussion, but I think he's right because I won't do it now because I already did that. Anyway, maybe you all agree with that. I don't know. But the remote control is a symbol of something new, a new paradigm, especially since also the term is remote, there's something there, and control. So it gives, contr it gives control, it's a remote control on something which is remote from us. So that's, there's a kind of a, a, a way of looking at those things that uh, brings us to some very interesting conclusion. So there is no September 31 that year, and there is never except in our imagination, any September 31. So, so but, but also, uh, Greenaway, uh, 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 came to this problem from many points. He is not saying the same thing. He's saying 25 years of silence, cinema is gone. No one looks at it anymore. <coughs> this will happen to the rest of cinema Cinema is dead. He likes formulas, but it's interesting. But it's interesting also to see that you can have someone as uh, intelligent as him, maybe more, I don't know, but with the French brain, <laughs> who says, well, cinema is more living that, than ever, which is Philippe Dubois in 2010. So in fact, that's maybe one of the peculiarities of, particularities, pardon, of, uh, or peculiarities, I don't know, of, uh, of uh, uh, this decennie, uh, this decade, that we, uh, the first decade of the, the century, where we were trying to see uh, which, which side we should uh, be with, because uh, we, there was a lot, there were a lot of contradictory uh, 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 declaration, and in fact, there was two challenging syndromas, uh, the one of the dead cinema, the one of the, I would call, extended cinema or expanded cinema to follow Dubois, uh, uh, Philippe Dubois' ways of seeing things, uh, according to, well, not according, but going along with uh, Gene Youngblood. Youngblood. So, that the shock wave of the digital has thus led researchers to broaden their perspective, that's for sure, and to leave what we might call their comfort zone, we, the researcher, and transform their career in the same way the career of the image itself has been transformed. That's one point which is very important. This change of the cinema changes everything for us, that we are, uh, the us, us, the searcher of cinema. Cinema scholars, who maybe will no longer, uh, will soon no longer dare call themselves cinema scholars solely. Also knew instinct instinctively these past uh, few years to examine cinema's technical dimensions, properly speaking, for two reasons. So we turn to cinema's technical dimensions mainly for two reasons. The digital highlighted precisely questions around technique and technology. And also, the digital was the process of bringing, uh, was in the process of bringing about the planned obsolescence of every technical aspect or of, of cinema, or almost. If you uh, will allow me to offer myself up as an example, I am like Jacques Aumont, as we will see later, and all of, of all those who learned the film professor trade in the 70s or before, a good example of adapting to the new post-digitalization juncture. Take this book that uh, uh, was, was uh, quoted uh, before. Uh, it, it, it's a book that I published with François Joss in 1990 and 1992. But what happened is that the editor wanted us to make a new version in 2016 or 15, and we published this in 2017, uh, sorry. And as you can see, we added the dimension of the TV series, which is uh, normal. The brief, uh, uh, the, 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 the new context obliges us uh, to try to 
transgress the frontier, the frontiers that they, that were uh, frequently uh, used uh, in the first, uh, uh, the last 30 years of the century, when we were all, were, well, we were, those who were there, those of, some of you were not there yet, were trying to distinguish, establish a new field, a new discipline maybe, but a new field of concerns, which we call film studies, cinema studies, depends, but which was, uh, uh, for which it, it was important uh, to uh, get recognition by the university, university uh, institution. And uh, it's funny to say that while the film study field has, is being recognized, let's say in the two, uh, at the turn of the century, it was at the same time that it was kind of dying, not dying because of uh, uh, inanition, but dying because melting into a more pro pro larger, uh, by enlarging the field to the other medias, which is not a bad news at all. But uh, it's interesting to see that uh, this happened. Um, so this brief, this brief update of news from the film world that I gave you enables us to come to conclusions around the fact that the advent of the digital has had numerous negative effects, entre autres. It certainly finished off celluloid film, or almost, because there are some exceptions, and there is some feature of the celluloid for sure also, but it has also rocked the foundations of every cinema institution from the smallest to the largest. Indicative evidence of this, the film studies field itself, as I just said. Uh, what do the professor of cinema, professor in cinema, what do they do today? Those uh, who were professor of the cinema in the, the late 70s, in the late 80s or 90s, they do, they, 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 they direct co conferences, <laughs> that are not about cinema, like this one, Puissance Esthétique du Virtuel, which, uh, um, is, uh, w which is uh, announced here on this uh, leaflet. And I have to tell you that those people that are uh, uh, singled out, which are uh, Jacques Aumont, uh, Jean-Michel Durafour, uh, Antoine Gaudin, uh, well, not long ago, they would say that, that from themselves that they were professor of cinema nothing else. And now there, this is this, uh, uh, there is this uh, conference there which, uh, which doesn't talk almost of, about cinema. A little bit, yes, for sure, but it's principally about uh, the, uh, uh, the virtual. So uh, even though, even uh, Jacques Aumont uh, is, uh, uh, is going this way, even though he's got a restrictive uh, it, it's not contradictory totally. It's got a, a, a very restrictive definition of cinema, but we'll see later. But all this is because of the blurring of the frontier, of frontiers, and uh, confusion of and the fusion of uh, the different uh, 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 media, as you know. But let us take a provocative, uh, provocative path for a couple of minutes. Maybe cinema can never die. That's one idea that came out when I wanted to make this uh, talk here. I didn't go too much this way, but I could have gone, but that uh, it would have been uh, something else, totally something else. Uh, maybe it could never die because we could say there's a way to say that it never existed as such. Maybe so this will, uh, this will, uh, uh, scandal, uh, will be, you will think that this is scandalous. Well, anyway, I can say that my friend Tom Gunning said something about the same, uh, the same, uh, with the same meaning, uh, which uh, when he said, uh, when he had this uh, lecture uh, titled, let's start over why cinema hasn't been invented. So uh, at any rate, one of the conclusions that has been drawn from the digital turn, maybe it's not that cinema never existed, but at least, to say the least, we can say that cinema, we recognize that cinema as a problem to stabilize its identity. And I think this is true from the beginning, but it's more acute, more uh, acute, yes, and also it's more acute because there are more thinkers of, about cinema. Because all the thinkers of cinema came to that conclusion 
like Bazin, like other ones. But but I mean now we're more numerous, and there is a big uh, big deal now with the the the, the dig digital era. And uh, something like uh, the conference by James Lastra shows us that uh, we can uh, in nineteen. Uh, 2011, we can come to a conference and say what cinema is for the moment. Well, uh, that's uh, very speaking in itself. And uh, in fact, we do not know, we don't know anymore which way we should use in order to be able to qualify cinema, in order to be able to answer to the famous famous question, what is cinema? And in fact, there is kind of a uh, it must be said that there is a true obsession throughout the 20th century, even more than you can imagine, about this question of what is cinema and uh, how should we call cinema. Of course, you know that the English hesitated between moving pictures, motion pictures, uh, that in 1910 the word photoplay was introduced, stemming from a national competition, uh, but this is just what uh, everyone uh, uh, and his brother knows in general. There is more than that, much more than that. And the most extraordinary thing is that the same kinds of discussions gay, uh, took place in France, in the French uh, brains just the same, but not, <laughs> not, not at all the same kind of questioning though. French and English, the same battle, the same debate. To my mind, this, contra this controversy is uh, indicative of a syndrome, another syndrome, that of the wish of certain interest groups to legitimate, legitimize their takeover bid, an OPA, as they would call it in France, when a politician publicly declares his or her intention to take over, a con uh, over control of a political party. So, I think this is very uh, important. And I give you an example with this uh, 1922 French uh, 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 publication uh, called Le Vocabulaire du Cinéma. In, the, in, in these years, 92, uh, 22 to 45, 50, it's full of articles in the uh, uh, corporate uh, 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 journal or other ones, uh, fan, 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 fan journals, uh, about this question of how should we call cinema? Because there is even someone like uh, Chartier, which is uh, uh, Jean-Pierre Chartier, which is very uh, important commentator of the, the turn of the four, from, I would say, 45 to 60 or something like that, who even proposed that we should say instead of le, le cinéma, we should say le lumière. And he explains that is by chance that lumière was the, but we have this word in French that is very important. And I think it would be better than cinématographe or cinéma, so, 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 so. So that was another, another string of what I could have told you today. But I resisted to do that. Uh, for many reasons, but I did, could not resist to show you this article, Le Vocabulaire du Cinéma, by a mysterious G, J, G, G, J, say G, J, J, Gugluk. Because <laughs> J stands for Jean. And I will give you, I give a copy of my book to the one who will tell me who is, who is that guy. No one? Yes. <laughs> Look at that. Gugluk, it's Jean-René Pierre Gugluk, Le Rouge Tillard des Arcs de Prifontaine. In fact, it's Jean Vitry. He, he picked his name on the, on the front of a train, Mitri. So I, I think he, he did a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> but it's incredible, eh? <laughs> That's the most incredible thing you will have heard here. And it's true. <laughs> Everything I say here is true. Everything. <laughs> but, you know, Jean Mitry, he, he, he would have needed more uh, than a, a page to, to sign his name, wrote a histoire du cinéma. And at one point in a conference in New Guinea about five years ago, I, I made a demonstration um, uh, for sure saying that, in fact, the problem resides exactly in this histoire du cinéma. Histoire du cinéma, the ancestors are Renault, let's say. By, among the ancestors. Histoire de la télévision, the ancestors are some other ones. But if you have an histoire des images animées, what does, what does that do? It gives, a lot, it, it gives you another realm 
It's another cultural series in order to place your mind, your French brain or your English brain, to see the world differently. And it's funny also because I've always been surprised, almost shocked, uh, that uh, uh, American people uh, let uh, the, the French, uh, the French uh, won the war of the invention of cinema because the French uh, uh, have been able to be the first one to be recognized as putting this, uh, the film on the screen, whereas there has been the kinetoscope uh, by Edison, kinetograph. And when I have been asked to, ask to do the series, se uh, 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 the series uh, Decayed, uh, Decayed series, uh, Screen Decayed, Screen Decayed, uh, I, I had, uh, I, I heard of the first book, and the book was supposed to be 1895 to 1910, or 1909. I said, my gosh, American people and Canadian, because there was a Canadian, in the, they, they don't know about that? Yeah. That the, there was moving pictures before? Especially now, because what is it showing on a screen? I mean, it's something, but it's only it's relative eyes. So uh, I, I, I debated with them, with the, the editor. Um, mm -hmm. Do we say editor or the publisher? Anyway, uh, and uh, I, 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 I proved my point. I said, I want to start 1890, 1890 to 1909. Uh, I think that this book that appeared, I think, in 2006, seven, I don't know, uh, um, that I edited with the introduction by myself with Tom Gunning, uh, I think uh, that this uh, uh, book, uh, it would have been a pity to do in 2000 and something, uh, a book that would have started the cinema, it, 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 well, cinema, it depends what you think, what you, it's sure that if you say the thing to, uh, to, 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 uh, to venerate is cinema, well, it gives an advance to a cinematograph. But I mean, in fact, it's not only that. And the film itself that, uh, that the Lumière uh, used was in existence before, and they were viewing machines. So what is it? I understand, though, that looking at the film of Lumière with that quality and, and also the popularity it had is very important. I give them all the certificate they want, all the honors, but not inventing the cinema, especially since I t in my, my uh, proper uh, uh, theory, cinema was, could not be invented, you don't invent cinema, and it has been institutionalized only in the teens. So anyway, come back to this. Uh. So in fact, I think after all that maybe we could see that there is no such thing as cinema. And in fact, there is only this, cinema. That is, quote, cinema, quote. Whence the title of this presentation, the resilience of, quote, cinema, unquote. And with its um, uh, subtitles, plus a reflection, uh, another reflection, another uh, proposal, and the resilience of the quotation <laughs> marks for surrounding the word cinema. I'm getting crazy. <laughs> but wait. This is grounded. This is grounded because uh, you will see that uh, there is a lot of, uh, uh, um, uh, of uh, 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 usage of the quotation mark in, the, in history. It's incredible. But I don't have all of them, but I see them often. But I have a couple of them. You will see it's interesting. So just want to, OK. Oh, let, us, let us be clear. Given cinema is a French word, do you seriously believe, I repeat, do you seriously believe that the word cinema, and not cinema, but cinema, which the English-speaking community unbashedly borrowed from the French, evokes the same thing in the French brain than in the English one? Or, as we common, commonly say, in Molière's tongue, than in Shakespeare's? Come on. Come on. <laughs> Americans sometimes have a taste for using French words in their vocabulary. But the inverse is even truer, as you know. The French not only have a taste for the English words, they really gobble them up. This is something that surprised and even shocks the French-speaking residents of my own almost American country. In fact, in Quebec, we, uh, we uh, uh, often laugh at the 
French people, sorry for the French, I love you, no problem. Uh, <laughs> but we, 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 we make joke at, at their uh, usage of mail for a courriel and newsletter for info letter. So uh, we make proud of ourselves saying that we, I will send you an info letter by courriel. But anyway, it doesn't pass us there. Uh, it, passes, it doesn't pass us, but in fact, in the first years when uh, there was you, they were using sometimes in the newspaper courriel, info letter, but then the taste of uh, otherness uh, won. It's normal, and you've seen, the, we, you've got a visit from the president recently. Okay, just the same. Americans have borrowed from French two super essential words from, for the film profession. The words montage and cinema. So, in fact, I'll be back on that. But what is interesting is that, you know, American, they liked the word cinema, but they didn't like all of the, their derivated derivates. They didn't like cinematologists. Mm -hmm. Because in fact, Society for Cinema and Media Studies, which was, was called Cinema this, this Way in 2002, before was known as Society for Cinema Studies, before that was known as the Society of Cinematologists. And look at that here declaration, with, which is full of, I don't know the word in English, urticaire, urticary? No? When, when it's, when it's how, how would you say that? Uh, art, anyway, so look at that. The first name of the society was always controversial. The term cinematologist was adapted by founding president Robert Gessner from the French filmology. He was uh, inventing, he didn't use film. A term coined by Gilbert Coencia in 1948 to give scientific credibility to his Institute of Filmology, established in 1948 at the University of Paris. In 1969, after Gessner's death, the council voted overwhelmingly, uh, well, overwhelmingly to change the name to the Society for Cinema Studies. Well, may he rest in peace. So in 1959, the, 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 the Society of Cinematologists was then founded by Gessner, and the journal, which was named Society of Cinematologists, became at last, they would say, Cinema Journal in 1966. Cinema Journal, who has been voted recently to be changed for Cinema and Media Journal, is that it? There was been a vote, I've got this, uh, but I took it out too long. Quotation mark. Quotation mark. Look at that. Roger Boussino. This book is a marvel. In this, uh, in his, uh, uh, in his, uh, uh, let me check. Yeah. Uh, see, he says, le cinéma est mort. Que s'est-il passé? So it's very interesting that he uses the quotation mark in 1967, at the same time when uh, the, uh, the uh, tweeter to Gessner were uh, kicking out cinematology from USA. And uh, we can see that he uses these, uh, these uh, um, uh, quotation mark. Uh, in French, we say distanciation uh, mark sometimes. Uh, and he, he writes that le cinéma, which is uh, known universally uh, uh, as cinéma, but the term cinema, with quotation mark, is too much general and too particular at the same time, and it needs to be precise. In fact, I don't know, I don't remember if I kept that, but I'll give you an, an insight of, about this. I think that the best way to do is always to, to have a, 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 a kind of expression, uh, syntagma figé, fixed syntagmas, cinema dot dash ta 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 dash da dash ta. So in order for us to understand what we say, but it means too heavy. So, but borrowings like the word cinema has a, have a significance. And I think that a borrowing montage and cinema, cinema from uh, the French by the American and maybe British, but mostly American, I would say, is not without significance. And I'm currently carrying out research to be able to trace 
back how and why these French words were introduced into English. English for uh, cinema is rather early. Uh, let's say 1910 to go fast, but it was not the most important term. But it's there. It's there. Montage, maybe more the 20s or the 30s. But well, uh, there is two different uh, theory about that. Either it's from the Russian, and the Russian took it from the French, and then. Uh, um, but it's not for sure. But will it will be for sure? Maybe in two years because we're working hard on this and we have good clues. So it's, inter 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 it's interesting to see why these, fr it would be interesting to see or to understand why these French words were introduced into the undifferentiated magma that is the brain of an English speaker. <laughs> I will have a lot to report in a few years, as I, so, as I told you. Maybe you will invite me, we'll see. But what I already know and what remains to be demonstrated, uh, 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 I know that it's uh, uh, of a uh, major interest. Who am I to talk about you to talk to you about this difference between the brains, between the language. Well, I said just before that I was from almost uh. America. In fact, the folk singer Robert Charlebois uh, 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 proposes a complaint, lament, the almost America, talking about Quebec. And he says, uh, among other things, uh, I would like to pouvoir tout lui crier la terre que on n'est ni de France ni d'Angleterre euh, et que nos Indiens travaillent en usine ou dans des mines à pouce et demi en haut des États-Unis. This is the translation. I'd like to be able to cry naked to the earth, not me, uh, that, one is, is, that one is neither from France nor from England and that our Indians work in factories and mines or mines an inch and a half above the United States. So that's the the realm of uh, Quebec people. Well, Quebec people, in fact, they were known as French Canadian before, and they were known before as Canadian, because Canadian me meant Quebecers at one point. Uh, don't, uh, it's very complicated to, uh, to explain. But anyway, more complicated than that is that I'm happy to be walking here on the soil of what was almost America. 300 years ago, uh, not 300, 250 years ago and even less. Because once upon a time, Milwaukee was part of the ancestor of this Presque Amérique. Who knew that? Raise your hand. Oh, <laughs> uh, thank you. Well, okay. M most of you are not from here, but Milwaukee was part of the Nouvelle France. And you can see that also in these books, like uh, this one by Richard Colbrook Harris, The Seigneurial System of Early Canada, which is uh, uh, printed or published uh, by University Laval and Wisconsin Press. So that, uh, th this remoted us from our main point, but I think that I <laughs> gave, it was important that I gave my credentials. What is cinema? One of the questions we always ask, when is cinema? When is it cinema? Where is cinema headed? Is it cinema? And I think that we could play with this for a long time because it all came out with this question from uh, uh, Bazin. But in fact, we could also apply it differently by saying, what do you call cinema? What does this group call cinema? based on this definition by Metz, who says that cinema is nothing more than the combination of messages which society calls cinematic, or which it calls films. And it's interesting to see that Homo comes to kind of the same you know, uh, conclusion. He says now, in 2012, uh, when he published that book, what we need so in the end, so in order to speak simply of this relatively simple situation, we need a word, a single word, but he didn't coin one, and I don't know who wants to coin one, which would say diver diverse socia social uses of moving images. The, the pr and, and I think we could, we could uh, uh, analyze that, because he says on moving images, so the, 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 
The stake is there. Moving images, cinema, mitri, histoire du cinéma, histoire des images animées. Well, are we specialists of cinema or moving image? Uh, the fact that we're coming, becoming a moving image uh, specialist, does it change something in our mind when we do historiography of cinema, etc., etc., etc.? And also, uh, this has a real uh, effect on the, uh, on the name of the programs in the university. This is very, very interesting. Because the same university can offer a film studies master and a moving image doctorate. Because they, 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 they founded it in two different times. So coexistence, specific, specific coexistence of not enemies, but different. Uh, th that's one thing. Uh, uh, but also, I always say as a joke, I understand why we keep cinema most of the time in the, our program. That's what we do anyway. Not cinema, cinema. We keep cinema in our program because I always think of the pity I would have for my student if uh, at uh, Christmas uh, uh, supper uh, the uh, grand aunt asks, what, uh, in what discipline or something do you study my, uh, my, 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 uh, my uh, nephew uh, at the university? Oh, I study in moving images. Ooh. I don't think it will be as uh, glamour, uh, glamorous as I'm studying in cinema, or in better in cinema. <laughs> so I'm talking about Jacques Roman also because uh, by chance he came uh, the corner of many of my uh, or the angles of many of my of my uh, 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 reflection, and also because I, I like him a lot. Uh, and it's a reciprocal, because now he is, he is providing this very strict definition in 2012, this which doesn't prevent him from doing virtual reality today, five years later, this today is a crucial point, which I believe can be used as a good criterion for determining what is cinema. Any film presentation which allows me to interrupt or modify, is that? Control, remote, green away. The experience is not cinema. Or it's not cinema, you would have said. I've translated it, but. So, interesting, because it, it, it is, there's, there, there, there are lots of rules at stake there. Um, so, and, and, and Belour uh, himself, uh, also propose uh, something like this, but not exactly uh, the same thing. Okay, uh, let you read that. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll have to accelerate, but at least I'll jump over a couple of the uh, of my slides. But I just want to to say a word of these. Uh, uh, qualificative that I qualificative that I took from uh, Francesco Cassetti, which are very interesting, and saying also that we talk in French of cinema éclaté. So can we talk about birth cinema? What there's a problem with the language, but I won't. You'll have to to wait later to see this. But anyway, giving to cinema a name that fits is not as e easy task as you can see. There has been a lot of uh, uh, proposals by. Uh, uh, American or uh, English people for cinema, and this is not enough. They used uh, cinema just the same. They needed to import uh, cinema from the French. Uh, so I'll come out from there. I'll go to something that will look like my conclusion. Um, okay, I have to go there. So, in fact, uh, the Bogdanovich Wells, well, well, in fact, it was Bogdanovich who said, I don't like cinema. But it's a, a little bit of a trick because he doesn't say he doesn't like the cinema. He says he doesn't like the word cinema. So, so but anyway, it's interesting to see that exchange between the two of them. Uh, sorry, there's a small problem there. Okay. I don't read it, it's, it's, for, it's better for you to read. Faster. So he finishes saying, I don't like cinema. And then Arsene Wells says, I know uh, 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 we'll be shooting the merchant of an ice. And he found a book in which they were calling photo players because the word photo play was very important at that time. <laughs> so, anyway, I don't know if there is a justice in the world. But 
Maybe because in some aspect, well said to Bogdan Rush, you're right to say that you don't like cinema. He's been punished <coughs> by Cannes. Because Cannes had excluded the film, is is uh, is an uh, unfinished film. Uh, and uh, uh, here is what uh, Thierry Frémo and the Cannes Film Festival uh, uh, decided not to invite any Netflix uh, film. And uh, uh, that, that is a, a real pity. And uh, uh, in fact, we can ask ourselves <laughs> if, if Cannes, if, if is the Cannes Film Festival the leading symbol of the institution cinema becoming iconoclast? Uh, because we have to ask questions to them since they took the decision of excluding the selfies <laughs> this year. Do you know that? The selfies, and they excluded also all the Netflix film, because they needed film that would be shown in salle de cinéma, in film theater. So Netflix versus Festival de Cannes, the, the can, it's a really problematic problem. Tempers are flaring between the leading movies in theaters institution and the leading movies outside, outside of theaters institution. It's a war, a real war, and it's not me who says so, it's there. Final. Remember this, applications. Applications, in fact, can't we say, uh, well, sad, but it's say, can't we say that, for example, the photo play is nothing but an application of kinematography? It's a way of looking at these things. Yes, an application, an appli, as we say in French, for those programs for smartphones. Or, as you say in English, an app, as you, yeah, app for application. So, can't we say that the photo play is nothing but an application of moving images? I know that the danger here, I'm conscious of it, is a kind of banalization of cinema, or cinema, which we could decline in various applications. Classical cinema, amateur film, pedagogic cinema, etc., etc. But I cannot prevent myself from quoting at least this uh, phrase from Bat in 1961. Okay, he tells me to stop. <laughs> I'm auto-denouncing myself. I'm almost done. Cinema's imperialism over other means of visual information, which he said can be understood from a historical point of view, but cannot be justified epistemologically. So we can see that the emergence of digital has also contributed to knocking cinema off its pedestal, because it demotes cinema's place in the chorus of media, and then cinema has been kicked out of its pedestal. <laughs> Now there's a new question from the desk of Les Cahiers du Cinéma. Last month, well, two months ago, they launched this. Pourquoi le cinéma? I do not have time to answer this question. Just invite me some other time and I will tell you. <laughs> this is here. Okay, we've got about 10 minutes for questions, um, comments, repronunciations of, uh, I mean, like, someone want to do German? Uh, yeah, Tammy? Okay. Um, yeah, thank you. We've got a mic if you want. Yeah. Oh, we have a mic, so yeah. where's the light? Yeah. Light? Yeah. Where is it? Good. Thank you, merci André. Uh, I was wondering, uh, I really like that your interrogation, of course, of, of the word cinema and cinema and uh, moving image. And I was wondering if you could talk to us a little bit about uh, the influence of your work on pre-cinema, 
and early cinema and thinking about cin well thinking about what cinema is uh, and the idea that it didn't begin of course not only not in 1895 and nor in 1893 but and obviously we could go much further back to camera obscura and uh, tableau vivant and uh, you know with camera obs uh, with the tableau uh, sorry um, uh, with some of the early cinema technologies that are, we, ha we have a kinds of projection of moving images um, in a, a setting. And we have stadiums of thousands of people in the mid 19th century watching moving images. And so when do, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that in relation to all of the, the very interesting things that you said about the insta instable identity of of the moving image uh, or of cinema um, with, you know, these ideas of it beginning with projection and, you know, or, or uh, some of the other technical elements like interruption with the remote control, all these things. Yeah. Uh, if you could maybe give some of the background from the pre-cinema. Yeah. Pre the there are many ways of uh, answering this. Uh, first thing I would say is that when you, not, not you, but when one talks about this, let's say Sadou, when he talks about the history of something, cinema or... He's got an agenda. I've got an agenda. You've got an agenda. We're now to have the same agenda. And his agenda is, in 1939, 40, 50, to try to set the story of cinema as a kind of recognized field. You understand? He published six books in the same series. Well, there had been other ones also, uh, in French, especially, Bardet, Chibaziak, Moche de Ra, and uh, Fardé. But there, are, there is a lot of, uh, you have to convince someone that it worth, it's worth uh, publishing these books. So, what he's trying to do is trying to say that cinema is an art. He has to establish that cinema is an art. Mitri Gogoluk also is doing, the, doing this. Uh, so, what, what he, we can praise them for having talked about what we should not call maybe praise cinema, but anyway, uh, praise cinema. But they did it especially to say, look, the roots of, big, uh, the, of cinema are uh, taken from long, but this is not cinema. I'm, I, I exaggerate. I make a, a, a little bit of, a, of a, 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 a exaggeration here for the presentation and for the answer I'm giving. So if there's an agenda, and I think that you have to, to take into consideration that the, not the broader you can be is the better, because the broader, brother is human uh, history of man and womankind. So you cannot do that. But at one point, uh, and, and if you want to make the history of international cinema, it will take a lot of uh, connaissance, knowledge, and books. And if you want to do uh, history of all moving images from uh, all the, the beginning, it will be very difficult. But anyway, I think that it is the agenda that you set with your ideological uh, uh, thinking that prevents you from doing this and that and brings you to do this and that. But specifically on this uh, optic, uh, optical toys and other uh, material of moving images before cinema, I think this is very important because my appreciation, or my uh, my uh, my côtoyer, côtoyer, being near from these kind of things, brought me to kind of a re revelation. For me, it was a, re a revelation. At one point. I had the real uh, revelation that when you look at the, 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 the image that is very uh, uh, known of a, a cinematograph Lumière uh, in 19, 1895 showing film, and, and, and behind you look at it, it's a lantern magic. Mm -hmm. So there's a magic lantern there. Mm -hmm. So at one point you say, okay, there's a magic lantern, because there was a magic lantern. <coughs> you, you cross the La Manche, and you go there, and those people uh, in England, they are lanternists, especially, who develop cinema. So at one point you say, oh, maybe the real thing is not the invention of the cinematograph, or the kinetoscope, I don't care. But, and the introduction of them in the spectacle, 
from a spectacle, but the introduction of those, uh, those machines in the other, what I call, cultural series. So the lanternists, they have added uh, 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 and enhanced um, uh, uh, carousel of, uh, of, uh, of slides with the cinematographs. And, 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 and when you got this in mind, you look at the newspaper and you see that they're saying the same thing at some point, but not the same way. So it's very important to, uh, to, to say that cinema does, did, what we call cinema, didn't come, didn't stem from nowhere. And in fact, that before being cinema, it was all the other cultural series uh, uh, that were uh, uh, using cinematograph uh, for uh, presenting images. And this is very important because I, at one point I realized that to understand the Royaume des Fées, Kingdom of Fairies of uh, Medellin, you had to you had to be suspicious of two things, two uh, two fields: cinematograph, well, cinematographic, cinematic, and fairies, fairy tales. But there is no department of fairy tales in the universities, so no one works on that. No one explained, which is not true anymore, because in 2007 there has been a book, very interesting book on that. But it's not encouraged. There's, no, there's a lot of uh, early cinema conference, but on fairies, no. Uh, fairies, so fairy tales. So you, there's, it, it, you need people in cinema to say, with, without being expert, well, we can say that in fact the fairies of millions are the continuation of the fairies from the stage to the screen, etc., etc., and this is very important. So my agenda was an, an, a, a full, an agenda fully cinematographic, but I tried to open to the other cultural series, and this is very important. I'm not saying that I have a better agenda than Sadhu and Mitri, but I think it. <laughs> but anyway, I think also that we can have better agenda today, larger. Thanks. Uh, Jane, we have one more question, I guess. I guess I'm you've got the mic. I got the mic, so I guess I have the last question. Um, so since Milwaukee is no longer in La Nouvelle France, um, I want to pose a slightly different question, perhaps for you, but also perhaps for the organizers of the conference and other people here, um, which is that in Milwaukee, we, we don't have a Department of Cinema Studies. We have film studies. We do film studies, and film is, is very much the operative term uh, which doesn't mean that a lot of these issues don't apply, but it is different. And I guess I'm wondering, uh, I, so you talked about the difference between cinema and cinema, but I'm interested in if there's a difference between cinema, cinema, and film, the way that that's operating differently. I mean, I, th I think that, so, so I was listening to the talk, but listening, well, what does it mean that uh, cinema is not always the operative term for the discipline in English-speaking countries or, or here? Uh, and, and what difference that makes, because some of, some of the story you're telling is very much grounded in the assumption uh, that, that cinema is going to, you, you know, kind of travel as a term here. But for me, I'm much more used to people talking about film. Okay, I, I don't know because I, I didn't make any survey and I'm not well, living, do, what, 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 I'm, what, living so one, I'm living one inch and a half. No, no, and I know that. Just one more question, and it's not really for you, but why this conference was called Ends of, of Cinema, why that was the, the, uh -huh. the term chosen. But so so your, your opening talk is very relevant for that, but it made me ask that whole question. Yeah, but your question is very good because, you know, I never understood why we have film studies in the universities, rarely cinema studies, sometimes, but the big uh, uh, association is cinema studies, Society for Cinema Studies. Is there a reason for that? Is cinema studies more, or maybe it's a mistake, or they didn't want to, to kill uh, second time guests there with uh, going to film instead of cinema? Cinematologists, we, we, we t take theologists out and we keep cinema, but it's bizarre. Uh, maybe it's the, because this is the, main institution, well, one of the main institutions, Society for Cinema Study. Uh, anyway, so that's one thing. And, uh, and also, uh, for me, it's difficult because I don't have an English brain. Uh, but my translator, my translator of uh, Timothy Barnard, of the book uh, that's called, which is, uh, in, fact, in French it's uh, Du Théo Fimé, but in English it's from Plato to Lumière, or something like that, and then it's written cinema uh, as a mean of narration, I don't remember. But he told me later, I regret I should have wrote film for this. 
And me, I was not conscious, because film, for me, film is a film. But then film, I, I understood, with film studies, you don't study a film, or you don't study 20 films, you study film. So film as art, also, and it's very known. So why is that? Is there that discrepancy between the usage in English? That's, well, maybe it's because of the related word. <laughs> That's a good question. I would just say that uh, post-cinema is probably behind our title. Plus, ends of film doesn't scan as well. <laughs> as <laughs> doesn't what? Scan as poetry. Uh, ends of definitely cinema. Not. Yeah. And I'm an English major. And then there's the, the digital. The advent of the digital has really made a shift away from ideas cinema. of film. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is a question we could pursue in the break. Let's take 15 minutes and also afterwards as well. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much.